This testimony by Mr. Jaffa was given to the court on the oath and captured by the court's record. At last Thursday's hearing, the Attorney General who was personally present, Philly Philly, in the court, could not object to this damning evidence of Mr. Jaffa. He did not deny calling and meeting Jaffa at odd hours. Neither did he deny Jaffa's claim that he had been impressing on him to skew his testimony in a matter that will allow the state to secure a conviction against the minority leader. You have been accused of something and you are sitting there. You decide that the way to respond is through a press statement where you could have defended yourself there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the media, in the period following these startling revel revelations, the NDC has obtained compelling evidence which support Mr. Jaffa's claim that the Attorney General indeed has engaged him on countless occasions and urged him to falsify, falsify on the line his testimony to aid the case of Attorney General against Dr. Kessel Atufosan. This evidence points to a devious diabolic and dangerous plan by the Attorney General to secure conviction against Minority Leader Dr. Atufosin at all costs, contrary to what the third accused knows and believes to be the truth. We have in our possession a series of recordings in which the Attorney General, Godfrey Dame, is clearly heard goading, urging, impressing upon, and actually coaching Mr. Jaffa to bear false testimony against the minority leader, Dr. Atufosa. All of this desperate subordination by Mr. Dame is just because he is hell-bent on securing the incarceration of the minority leader unjustly. Ladies and gentlemen, the first of these recordings is a 16 minute, five seconds telephone conversation between Godfrey Dami and Richard Jaffa, the third accused person, held on the morning, morning meaning seven, 12, 12 minutes after 7 a.m. of 9 April 2024, a day that the third accused Richard Jaffa was preparing to go to court to continue his testimony. In this recording, which I will play shortly, <laughs> which we <laughs> we will play to your hearing and share with you shortly. Godfrey Dami, the Attorney General, is clearly heard doing the following. I want to prepare your mind so that when you are listening to me, you can understand what it is. <laughs> In this recording, if you pay attention, you see that Godfrey Dame is heard impressing upon Richard Jaffa, the third accused, to skew his answers and testimony to support the petition's case. The and the prosecution's case, I beg your pardon. This was despite Mr. Jaffa's insistence that the lie the Attorney General wanted him to tow was dishonest, untenable, and that his conscience could not allow him to do so. 
the dishonorable, now dishonorable attorney general, then dangled the assurance that Richard Jacquard's acceptance to testify the attorney general's way was not going to get him into any difficulty. Tell a lie and we will set you free. That was the agenda. If we tell a lie and we kneel our enemy, not the state's enemy, but our enemy, we will set you free. And he says, no, my conscience doesn't allow me to do that. Conspiracy against an accused person. In the recording on the reference, Richard Jackpa reveals that Godfrey Dami had met him on several occasions at the residence of a Supreme Court judge, sitting Supreme Court judge, to impress upon him to testify in a manner that the prosecution wants in order to fix and wrongly jail the minority leader, Dr. Tufosu. Godfrey Dami did not refuse this statement by Richard Jackpa except to caution him that they were speaking on phone and that he was not sure if anyone <laughs> was recording <laughs> their conversation. It's all contained in that tape. <laughs> also, Godfrey Dami is heard in the recording urging and coaching Richard Jaffa, albeit with strong protests from Mr. Jaffa, to provide answers that Jaffa knows, that Jaffa knows to be false to the court. There is the issue of the professional misconduct too. The audio recording provides incontrovertible evidence of professional misconduct on the part of Godfrey Odame as a lawyer and a prosecutor. By talking to a represented person in an ongoing trial on the blind side of the represented person's lawyer and urging the represented person to testify in a manner that aids the prosecution's case Gottfried Dami violently violated the legal profession, professional code of ethics rule 2020, LI 24-23, in many ways. I'm not a lawyer, but this was passed in parliament. <laughs> I'm a parliamentarian. <laughs> This gross professional misconduct on the part of no less a person than the Attorney General, who was the leader of the bar, bears a high responsibility to adhere to the rules of ethics of the legal profession is reprehensible and totally unpardonable. The next one has to do with the fabrication of evidence to pervert the course of justice. Minister of Justice fabricating evidence to pervert the course of justice. It is instructive to note that in the audio recording, Godfrey Dame is heard persuading Mr. Jaffa not to end his testimony by a particular time to allow him to travel, to allow he, Godfrey Dami, to travel. The dishonorable attorney general is also heard persuading Mr. Jaffa to procure and submit a fake medical excuse duty to the court, which he was scheduled to testify before that morning. Attorney General <laughs> and Minister of Justice. 
This was to enable Godfrey Dame travel abroad without missing Japa's testimony. Attorney General, you are asking somebody who is before court for what you claim to be one crime to go and commit another one to come and deceive the court. <laughs> By asking a witness to fabricate evidence to deceive a court, Godfrey Odami, the Attorney General, sought to undermine the judicial and justice administration process in this country. This conduct of Godfrey Odami constitutes the offense of perjury, which is a crime punishable under the laws of Ghana, specifically Section 213 and 214 of the Criminal and Other Offenses Act 1960, Act 29. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I would at this stage invite you. You have been salivating for some time now. <laughs> but I want to invite you to the content of this recording after which I'll make some important observations. Let me allow you. <laughs> you pay only after the goods have been given. That is also in the contract, not so. Yes, but then, but, but then the the financial instrument for the project is an irrevocable okay. letter of credit. So, Good. so that okay. credit letter so has already on. been sent. Hold on. Hold on, no, no, no problem. But. Uh, in, 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 in my view, that letter of uh, area, the contract requires that you pay by this okay, it's not so. Yes, in addition, we should establish it uh -huh. upon the sign of the contract. So already you have paid. Upon, contract. Upon, upon the sign of the contract for every 50 ambulance. Yes. That no, upon no, the signing of the contract right. for every 50 ambulance, since there was oh. no advance yes. mobilization, advance payment, uh -huh. that. So, uh -huh. That LC was uh -huh. a security that you have to establish ahead. No problem. It's not the contract for every fifty ambulance. Is it the contract for the contract for every fifty ambulance? Pardon? Is it, is it, is it the contract for? I'm saying upon the sign of the contract for every fifty ambulance. Yes. Is it the contract for the every fifty ambulance? If the contract is for two hundred ambulances in tranches of fifty, uh -huh. fifty, fifty. Good. Hold on. So, so that contract for fifty ambulance is different from this one. No. It is, the contract is one contract for 200 ambulances, which has been broken down within the contract for every, few, you establish LC for every 50 tranche. So you have four LCs for the 200 ambulances. No, that part, yes. No, that part, I disagree with you. But if you look at the terms of the contract, it's quite clear. And it's not be difficult for you to accept because it doesn't put you in any, any problem. At all. That, that, that does not put you into any, any, any difficulty. I don't know the, the Minister of Health, I don't know the Minister of Finance. So for you, me, if you accept that, no, no, see, see the, 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 the problem I have in accepting that for you yes. is, is accepting that for you for you is that in uh, there are letters that confirm that both from you see the witness is telling you what the situation is, what the true facts are. And you say you should testify in a certain particular way. And that it won't create any difficulty for him. He will go free and somebody else will be jailed for dishonesty. And the witness keeps insisting that it is against his conscience he cannot do what you want done. Continue. <laughs> Continue. Government and from the principal. That is for every That's 50 right. ambulances. <coughs> that confirms yeah. that. Yeah. And I'll be tending those letters in. So I cannot go against what the, the letters say and the contracts say because I was the agent at that time. So, hold on. Uh, Japan business was hold the agent. Hold on. LC is on site. Um, payment shall be in your state. First, if we say they have no advance payment. Yes. What does advance payment mean? What it means, what, what, pay, uh -huh. what it means is that you are not the the supplier was not going to be paid any cash 
any money for him to use in uh, procuring the, um, uh, the, the uh, all the accessories and everything to manufacture. So the manufacturer will use his own money to buy the, uh, the ambulance vans, all the accessories from across the globe. With the security from government being the LC. And the LC has been conditioned precedent. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Yes, advice to mention on the paying in advance of the delivery of the goods. The, uh, they said no advance payments. Yes, advance payment means that we are paying before the goods are delivered to you. No, they said no, no, no advance payment. Not that there is advance payment. Yes. No advance. I mean that you will not pay. The minute, the, yes, until the goods are delivered to you. Also. Yes. Yes, until the goods are delivered, you don't pay at all. You don't pay. Also. Uh -huh. So, and then also, it goes ahead to say that payments shall be in a free manner. Else it's on site of goods. In fact, what is the even else on site of goods? So that's me. What 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 LC on site of goods means is that when you yes. ship the documents, when you ship the goods, sorry, when you no when you ship the goods. sorry 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 when you ship the goods from your port of origin, the bill of ladies bill of lading of the goods is what so you use you, as LC on site of goods means yes means when the goods have been shipped they have been shipped Not and then the goods have been delivered in Ghana. No, when the goods have been shipped. Because you have gone okay. you have okay. gone to so do principal. Uh -huh. So what I'm no trying problem. to explain is that so you use the so bill of lading. No uh -huh. You use a so bill of so lading. You use a bill okay. of lading. So you establish the as it's after. Pause. You see the problem of Godfrey Dami. He doesn't understand anything about this international payments at all. And he wants the witness to accept his ignorance and then go to court to make a statement that will expose the witness as also as ignorant as Godfrey Dame. Because you see, what you call a letter of credit it's just some guarantee. You sign an agreement with somebody that I'll supply these ambulances. But the person must also be secure that when he supplies the ambulances, there will be payment. So you sign a document that, look, the moment you are able to buy your equipment, yourself and you ship them and you bring the bill of lading to me for me to satisfy myself that the equipment had been shipped and that this is the evidence that I will be receiving them on this date then I can also authorize the bank to pay you what has been uh, agreed, you know, upon. agreed upon because you can't go to the sea and reclaim the <laughs> things back <laughs> you see so that's all so a letter of credit does not give you money until I eventually tell them to pay because I have received the items so you are saying that somebody signed a letter of credit and so uh, the nation has lost money <laughs> and your government took over if you realize that the, the things have not been received why would you authorize payment so this is simple but uh, the problem <laughs> the problem is ignorance Okay, go ahead. Continue. Special credit inspection. No one no. no dispute about that. No, the LC is established. As soon as you sign the contract, you establish the LC, and that becomes the security comfort for the supplier no, to invest money. It says, on site of goods have a upon the sign of the contract. Yes. For every 50 ambulances. Yes. Yes, which contract is this? It's not a contract for every 50 ambulances. So, so, in, 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 and that, 
main contract. This was like the main contract. The main contract yes, and, L- and LC for every 50 of the 200. You have said so. You can so the contract is not saying that government should establish one LC which is 15.8 million euros for the whole 200 at a go. No, government has a bulk contract of 15.8 million euros. Now, this contract will become, the ambulance will become in tranches of 50 ambulances. So you establish your LC for the 50. When that 50 have been delivered, and everything sorted out and handed over, another LC is established for another subsequent 50, until you finish all the 200. That's what the contract says. So, the LC that was but established... Even then, even then, no, no, no. Mm. I don't agree with your explanation. But even then, this your explanation. Mm. That's not what happened in this case. Okay, what happened? Yeah, that's not what happened in this case. Yes, because I mean, the LC was established even before a recruitment is mentioned. Yes. No, sir. Yes. There was no feasible inspection. So yes. have been so so it means there was no basis for the LC to be to be established in the first place. No, no, that's no. That's really not, not your problem anyway. Right, that place, that place, yeah. in that, that particular place, you are getting it wrong. If I may have patience for me to explain. No, no, no. You are getting it wrong there no. because when you establish LC, the LC had pre- conditions precedent for it to be on it. And the condition precedent says that you can only cash the LC when you present shipping documents, which is bill of lading, to the Ghana International Bank of the of the, the, the buyer before you can the LC can be on it. So even though the LC was established upon the signing of the contract, was supposed to be established upon the sign of the contract, it cannot be cashed or on it. It becomes a form of security for the supplier to invest his own money. And when he, he ships the ambulances, he can then send a bill of lading to your bank, your bankers, to then honor the LC, because that is a condition precedent. But, but in any case, in this case, even the LC was actually cash. Everything that payment was actually made before the goods were shipped. No, so the goods got to Ghana. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. He couldn't have. He couldn't have. Oh, yeah. The supply. There is no way oh, yeah. under the sun he could have cashed the LC before the shipping document, which were condition precedent, was presented to Ghana International Bank. Even when he presented the documents to Ghana International Bank, Ghana International Bank refused to honor the LC, raising issues of discrepancy. Which came back to Bank of Ghana, which later went to the Ministry of Health, and then Animana authorized Bank of Ghana through Ministry of Finance to pay because they had sorted out the discrepancy to Big C. That time, uh, around this time, or uh, the ambulance had already arrived in Ghana. You are not privy to this one, I'm telling you. In my view, if you, if you, if you, if we agree to this theory, Mm-hmm. It's so simple, the theory of the case. No, I agree to you, you the way you want to go the way you want to go about it. No, so you yeah, if you agree to this deal <laughs> where the witness agrees with Godfrey or that means the way he wants to go about the case, then he the witness will have no case. There will be no difficulty for him. So listen to that part then. <laughs> Try not to say it because I want to help the AG make his case. And I ask myself, what is what is my interest in it? I'm not asking to really help me. I'm just going by it. So anyway, so 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 that's fine. So this one was even just by the way. I, 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 I hope you get my deal. So, uh, it's because I'm innocent and I'm going through ordeal. So I'm looking at another person also going to go through ordeal and through me because I know the truth and I decide not to say it. About question sentence. If I go by that way, frankly speaking, I'll be dishonest. Because I know that is not how it's supposed to be about it and how you want me to go about my answering question sentence. That time, uh, around this time, or uh, the ambulance had already arrived in Ghana. You were not privy to this one, I'm telling you. In my view, if you, if you, if we agree to this theory, Mm -hmm. it's so simple, the theory is. No, I agree to you, the way you want to go, the way you want to go about it. You let agree. You let describe it that way. You let describe it that way. Do I want to cover it? Okay. You agree to say it this way. For me, it makes it simple. Yes, it will make but it. It, 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 it doesn't also involve. It doesn't involve any difficulty for you. Yes, I agree. I understand yes, your point. I don't know. When you say there's no advancement. Yes, when you say there's no advancement, there's no advancement. Uh, ordinarily, meaning in Ghana, 
uh -huh. that you, you 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 don't pay until you get your goods. Now the contract here, I mean the clear terms. Unless maybe you guys do not draft the contract one. It says everything is on site of goods shall be established upon the signing of the contract for every future. No, it was the contract was drafted by government. government. It was drafted by government. And it, it, and, and it was an and, and uh, 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 department perused the contract and approved the contract for government. It, it is not a problem. We have the approval. Every contract that we approve mm -hmm. before later on when they implement it, then problems. You, you uh, see, uh, what uh, the uh, difficulty uh, I have, I have with your, your your position is that you see, I you frankly speaking, fine as you are saying, if I agree to your your, your position how you want to go about it and how you want me to go about my answering question sentence if i go by that way frankly speaking i'll be dishonest because i know that is not how it's supposed to you heard him this is the facts but you want me to go about it your way and i feel that if i go about it your way i'll be dishonest Continue. 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 Question sentence. If I go by that way, frankly speaking, I will be dishonest because I know that is not how it's supposed to be. And I'll be dishonest, and I'll be dishonest in such a way that I'll be assisting for someone I know is completely innocent about this. For example, to force him to be jailed because I knew something was wrong, was not the way, and I decided to. to to keep quiet and to answer the question in a way that will make your case better for you to jail him. I'll, I'll be battling with my conscience. That is the problem I'm having. Any, any time you bring up this issue with my uh, with Yoni Kulendi, when Yoni Kulendi is placed, any time you bring this issue, that is my problem I'm having. Because me, for example, I... That is the problem I'm having. Any, any time you bring up this issue, me to go about my answering question sentence. If I go by that way, frankly speaking, I'll be dishonest. Because I know that is not how it's supposed to be. And I'll be dishonest, and I'll be dishonest in such a way that I'll be assisting for someone I know is completely innocent about this. For example, to force him to be jailed because I knew something was wrong, was not the way, and I decided to, to, to keep quiet and to answer the question in a way that will make your case better for you to jail him. I'll, I'll be battling with my conscience. That is the problem I'm having. Any, any time you bring up this issue with my uh, with Yoni Kulendi, when Yoni Kulendi is placed, any time you bring this issue, that is my problem I'm having. Because me, for example, I am in this case because I'm innocent and I'm going through ordeal. So I'm looking at another person also going to go through ordeal and through me because I know the truth and I decide not to say it because I want to help the AG make his case. And I ask myself, what is what is my interest in it? I'm not asking you to really help me. I'm just going by it. But anyway, so so so, so that's fine. So this one was even just by the way. I, 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 I hope you get my deal. So, uh, it's, 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 it's on the phone. I don't even know that. Oh, no, no, no. Recording. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry about that one. My yeah, issue, my issue, I'm just like that. I'm just, or somebody oh, no. Or, you and I uh, will be meeting. Please, please. Order. <laughs> Please, let's listen to the tape, please. I beg you. Yeah, my issue, I'm just, I'm just, oh, no. You and I will be meeting, will be, you'll be meeting me at my, at my cousin's place, and you've been bringing this issue up several, several times. And I keep telling you that I can't do that because. This is the man who says he has never met the witness. Continue. Yeah. It's for every. So when you see the hand for every fifty ambulance, means that it's not only the fifty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh For every, it means that it is not only fifty. Mean that there are a lot of fifties that will be following. Uh -huh. So that is what I was trying to explain to you. So frankly speaking, okay. the LC that was established was was as a security for the supplier to invest his own money since there's no advantage. Yes, it is the same that was used to be. Because LC was the means of payment. Yes. Okay. So it's not only fifty. 
when the, when the conditions presidents are met. Oh, that he has, he has the bill of ladies, the ambulance have been shipped and the bill of ladies are presented. That is when you can catch the LC. So until you ship the ambulance, you can't catch the ambulance, you can't catch the LC. It was done in this case also. Yes, in this case, yes. When he shipped the ambulances, he then presented their document to Ghana International Bank. And then Ghana International Bank refused to honor the LC and raised issues of discrepancies, which was later cleared yeah, by, by Animana yeah. at the Ministry of uh, Health for payment to proceed. And that is yeah, how he was paid. Okay. Yes. So, in frankly speaking, if there's somebody who authorized this payment to go on, even though in Ghana International Bank raised issues of discrepancies, it's any manner. He, he, he was doing, he, he was authorizing those payments. But you recall that you had the Bank of Ghana officials and the Minister of Officials, and even 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 said that no payment can go on, except with Minister of Finance authorization. There's no way Minister of Health was right. In fact, Minister of Health actually gave me their letter. They said no, they should go ahead and produce ambulances. <laughs> no, oh, I for that, I for that letter, I for that letter that said IT wrote that they should suspend production those things was contrary to the terms of the contract. And that letter went to the to your office, the AG's office, and the AG debunked that letter and wrote his legal opinion and told her that they should proceed. So AG, that letter had been destroyed by your by your department, by your ministry. So that letter is of no value. It is the AG's legal opinion that overrode that letter. And Minister of Finance had to All implement right. the AG's opinion. Yeah. And by the AG's legal opinion, they tell the contract will be honored. Uh, yes. Or they the contract will be And because they were, all, they were already breached, and the All AG right. wanted them mm. to honor it. So that. Uh, should I the, the the ministry? Yeah, they, did, the they yes, they still didn't honor some part of the contract. Mm -hmm. They honored the LC part, but when it came to a pre shipment inspection, they refused to honor that particular part. Okay. Uh -huh. So they waived their right All to right. go and inspect, and then they turn around and blame people for you not going to inspect to rectify any manufacturing defect that the pre shipment inspection was meant to kill. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So okay. should I say? through her negligence and refusal to implement the principal inspection, created this problem. Uh -huh. That's what okay. I'm trying so, to so, so, the reason why I'm for that is that that's my time to move for, for the rest of the... Uh, oh, that uh, means that you are not going to be around. So, yeah, and then even next week, the whole of next week, I will not be around. Um, there's a way of... <laughs> even, not, even finishing next week. Um, I would appreciate. Oh, no, no, okay, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll not finish next week. I don't think I'll be able to finish because the documents are many. So you surely go and come and meet, and meet me. Oh, no, but that will also depend upon, that will also depend upon the judge's but behavior. I'm going to want to make a speech next week. Okay. Do as I have, you Okay, fine, if you bring the medical excuse next week. I said you. I have medical excuse. I said that I should bring your medical excuse next week. Yeah, you can. You can if you want. Ah, but brother, you want this woman to issue bench warrant for me again? Right. You see, Attorney General asking the witness who is fit, who is not sick, to produce medical uh, uh, Excuse duty to go and mislead the court. You see where we are now. Minister of Justice asking somebody who is not sick to go and forge a medical excuse duty, to go and mislead the court. Please continue, tape. <laughs> Grammar four, continue. You have an... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I don't know whether I should continue talking again. <laughs> you just... The recording you just heard is one 
that is worrying and all Ghanaians must be concerned about it. This is a scandal of unimaginable proportions that seriously exposes the criminal mindedness and lack of integrity of the Attorney General, my brother Godfrey. <laughs> Oh, if I have a criminal brother, it doesn't mean I'm a criminal. <laughs> it also highlights the dishonesty of the prosecution in the ambulance trial and the desperate lengths they are prepared to go to secure wrongful conviction against honorable Ato Forsen at all costs. Clearly, Mr. Dami who as Attorney General ought to know better, was doing everything he could, including criminal acts, to defeat the long-cherished legal principle that it is better to, send a thousand, to set a thousand guilty people free than to convict one innocent person. Again, this recording confirms our long-held position on Godfrey Dami's notoriety for judicial manipulations against opponents of the Akufa do Baumia regime. After many years of getting away with his shoddy, a shady, crooked, and underhand dealings, Godfrey Odame's cap has become full. And his day of reckoning has finally arrived. Today, Godfrey Odame stands exposed as an unethical, scheming, and devious attorney general who will go to whatever lengths, including engaging in criminality to unjustly silence, persecute, and imprison critics of his government. Dame is clearly a devious character, bereft of integrity, honor, and unfit to occupy the high and hallowed public office of Attorney General. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, why should we be concerned about this state recording at all? As I have already intimated, intimated. This tape recording captures professional misconduct, unethical behavior, and criminal conduct on the part of no less a person than the Attorney General of the Republic of Ghana, Godfrey Dame. This conduct of Attorney General Godfrey Dame offends Rule 13 40 and 54 of the legal profession, professional conduct and etiquette rules, quote unquote, LI 2324. I'm not a lawyer, but all these things were passed through Parliament. <laughs> so if I'm quoting them, I'm not talking court matter, I'm talking about the laws we pass, <laughs> the laws we pass in Parliament. <laughs> Rule 13 of LI 2324, which is on communication with represented party. Communications with represented party. If there's a court case and somebody is represented by a lawyer, if another party is talking to that person, he must talk to him in the presence of his lawyer or through his lawyer. The law we pass, does that know what they mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's consent. And it states, quote, a lawyer shall not approach, communicate, or deal with a represented person on a matter or attempt to negotiate or compromise a matter directly with a represented person except through or with the consent of the lawyer 
of that represented person. Black and white, that is the law. At the time that Mr. Godfrey Dami was calling and meeting Richard Jaffa at odd hours to urge God, impress upon and coach him to testify the Attorney General's way, Mr. Jaffa was represented by a lawyer. They claim that the Attorney General has been engaging the third accused directly because he has been changing lawyers frequently is totally false. For instance, at the time Godfrey Dame engaged the third accused Richard Jaffa in the phone call conversation that we just played to you on 9th April 2024, the third accused was represented by the distinguished lawyer Tadius Sorry. It is clear from the tape recording that Godfrey Dame was communicating with the third accused Richard Jaffa on the blind side of his lawyer as well as the court and he was attempting to compromise Jaffa in order to wrongfully convict Dr. Atufosin. This is a cardinal sin against the legal profession. Good professional conduct and etiquette rules. That is contained in LI 2324. Again, Rule 41 of LI, the same LI 2324, which highlights special responsibilities of a prosecutor state. Good. Where a lawyer acts as a prosecutor, in this case, where Godfrey Dame acts as a prosecutor, the lawyer shall act resolutely and honorably within the limits of the law and shall treat the court or tribunal with candor, fairness, courtesy, and respect." Unquote. It is clear from this tape that Godfrey Dame's conduct violates Rule 41 of LI 2023. He consciously, deliberately, and knowingly did not act resolutely nor honorably. Neither did Dame treat the court with candor, fairness, and respect that all lawyers and in this particular case, prosecutors are required by law to do. The standard of integrity of evidence is also provided for by Rule 54 of LI 2324. And it states, I beg to quote, Rule 54.1, a lawyer shall not advise or suggest to a witness to give false evidence. So a lawyer shall not advise a healthy person to procure <laughs> excuse duty from <laughs> fraudulently to come and mislead the court. <laughs> Two, a lawyer shall not suggest A or B condone a client or another person suggesting to a prospective witness the content of any particular evidence which the witness should give at any stage in a proceeding. You heard him suggesting to the witness how he should talk, how he should answer questions so they can jail at person and he will be free. This is the duty placed by law on all lawyers, including the Attorney General. Godfrey Dami, by his conduct, which are captured on this tape, clearly violates this duty and place this duty placed on him as a lawyer. Again, Godfrey Dami's conduct violates Section 315 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960 at 29, which is on fabrication of evidence and states as follows. Whoever fabricates evidence with the intent to defeat 
uh, obstruct or pervert the course of justice in any proceeding shall be liable to the same penalties as if he had committed perjury in that proceedings. It is clear from the tape recording that Mr. Dami was urging, goading, and encouraging the third accused to fabricate evidence in the form of a fake medical excuse duty to deceive the trial court. Ladies and gentlemen, we now get to false entrapment excuse that Godfrey Dami seems to be relying on. We note that following Mr. Richard Jaquas explosive testimony last Thursday and the widespread controversy it has generated, Godfrey Dami has resorted to peddling more lies in an attempt to escape accountability. The thing about lies is that when you tell one, every lie you tell, you need 10 more lies to, to defend. <laughs> so it grows exponentially. First, the Attorney General publicly stated at paragraph 2 of his press release of 23rd May 2024 that, quote, the Republic has never required or desired the cooperation of any of the accused persons in the matter in which it has already succeeded in establishing a prima facie case against all the accused persons. Neither the Attorney General nor any officer from the Office of the Attorney General has approached any of the accused persons with a view to obtaining evidence from them. Have you heard it? In spite of all this that he has said, he has cleaned the mouth and is telling the public that he has never engaged anybody on, on this matter at all. It is glaringly clear from the tape recording you just listened to that this claim is a bare-faced lie peddled by the dishonorable Attorney General and his office to deceive the public. In sharp contrast to, this, to his earlier claim that he has never met any of the accused persons, the Attorney General now claims that he has actually contacted and met the third accused, Richard Jaffa, but that he met him only once at the residence of a Supreme Court judge, and that this meeting was not at his behest, but rather at the behest of a sitting Supreme Court judge who entrapped him. He now wants to extend the lie to a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all these claims by the Attorney General through his spokesperson are lies and we have evidence to prove so. In addition to the voice recordings, we have other evidence by way of screenshots of chats on WhatsApp between Godfrey Dame and Mr. Jappa, which further prove that the Attorney General contacted and represented a represented person without recourse to the represented person's lawyer. The charts further show that it was Godfrey Odame Godfrey Dame, who chose to meet Richard Jaffa at the house of the Supreme Court judge, and not the Supreme Court judge who invited them. So the first one. Is on the, the first one. The date, 16th February. 16th February, 2022. You know the mic. The mic. Uh -huh. 16th February, 2022. From Richard Jaffa. I am humbly requesting. I am humbly requesting for a time and venue at your convenience to meet you for a private discussion, please. Then I'm most, most grateful for that kind gesture from you. Then hope to hear favorably from you. Next. This is Next. all from Richard okay. Dapper. Then you you come down here. Okay. That is from Godfrey Dame. I will arrange through your brother. Thanks. 
That brother is the Supreme Court judge. So Godfrey Dami says he will arrange to the Supreme Court judge for them to meet. So the Supreme Court judge has not requested for any meeting in his house. It's Godfrey Dami who arranged the meeting. Then he said, okay. Yeah, so no, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Go back. So I speak with you. Mm -hmm. The charts show it was Godfrey Dami who chose to meet Richard Jaffa at the house of the Supreme Court judge. As you can see from, the, from this screen, this is a WhatsApp chart dated 16 February 2022, which Godfrey Dami undertakes to arrange a meeting with Mr. Jaffa through his brother, actually his cousin, the Supreme Court judge, through a WhatsApp message sent at 7.32 p.m. This evidence totally belies Dame's contrived and lost claim that he was entrapped. So he was not entrapped. He planned to use the Supreme Court judge to call the witness for whatever they wanted to set up. The next set of WhatsApp chats, WhatsApp exhibits two, three, and four, <laughs> dated 17 July 2022, shows Godfrey Dame receiving certain soft copies of documents from Mr. Richard Jaffa to facilitate his prosecution of the minority leader at 11. 29 p.m. Close to midnight. So if you hear Richard Jaffa saying odd and unholy hours and times, this is what he was referring to. This was immediately after the Attorney General had met Mr. Jaffa at the residence of the Supreme Court judge at the instance of the Attorney General. So these are documents which the Jaffa forwarded to Godfrey Dame after that meeting. I want to jail somebody. I don't have the documents. Can you help me? If you help me, <laughs> I will free you. Then we can use the documents. And you got all these documents. And still the document could not incriminate anybody. And now you want him to lie on top of the documents. So these are <laughs> documents. <laughs> and in the next WhatsApp chat, WhatsApp Exhibit 5, dated 23rd November 2023, Godfrey Dami is seen to have placed a call at 10.40 a.m. to Richard Jaffa and followed it with a message at 10.49 acknowledging a message sent to him by Mr. Jaffa that the case had been adjourned to Thursday the following week. Bro, the case is adjourned to next week Thursday. The man is still on admission fighting for his dear life. Then, Godfrey Dami, okay, thanks. This, uh, the final WhatsApp chat, WhatsApp Exhibit 6, Dated Tuesday 9th April 2024, shows evidence of a 26-minute phone call placed to Richie Jaffa by Godfrey Dami at 7.12 a.m. The morning of the day, Jaffa was scheduled to testify in the court. The, one, the recorded one we played for you. It was the morning Jaffa was going to court to testify and he was saying that today if you go tell them this letters of credit means cash payment letters of this means this so go and tell them ah. but we don't have our own finance system in Ghana which is different from the finance system everybody knows all over the world how can you say that 
letters of credit is just cash payment. Somebody has taken the money without delivery, of course. And he was pushing him. And the man says, I have my conscience. I can't do it because I am being prosecuted from lies somebody has told about me. So why do you want me to lie for another person to also prosecute? When I'm feeling the pinch of how lies can be used to, to, to create a problem for you. So I'm not going to do it. You see, it is this telephone conversation that we have played to you, and it was in this conversation that Godfrey Dami, among others, asked Jakpa to fabricate a fake medical excuse duty to deceive the trial court. That's the claim by the dishonorable Attorney General Godfrey Dami that he only met the person once and that same was true entrapment by a supreme court judge is not only false but hogwash you now agree ladies and gentlemen following mr japa's ex money in court and now i'm going to talk about the contrived plea bargain which uh, which uh, Dame is using as a, a, a reason for for day meeting and all that. The Attorney General has falsely claimed, through his spokesperson and various assigns, that his engagement with the third accused was for purposes of plea bargaining negotiations at the instance of the third accused. We want to state for the records, that there has not been any plea bargain meetings between the Attorney General and the Tenders throughout this trial. All the letters being circulated by the Attorney General in the media dated 27 February 2023, 16 May 2023, 30 May 2023, and 12 June 2023 were proposals for amicable settlement and plea by from Deep Sea LLC and Mr. Jaka. All these proposals were rejected by the Attorney General, whereupon the trial court decided to continue with the hearing and adjudication of this case. Since then, the court has not been informed of the commencement of any plea bargain negotiations as required by Section 162C, Sub 3 of Plea Bargaining Act 2022, Act 1079. For emphasis, aside the letter submitted by Mr. Japa to the Attorney General for settlement or plea bargaining, which proposals were all rejected by the Attorney General. There has not been any meeting between either Mr. Japa or his lawyers on the one hand and Attorney General or his assigns on the other hand. It is worthy of note that all those letters were signed by lawyers of Mr. Japa. This means that assuming the Attorney General had accepted to engage the third accused in plea bargaining negotiations, same should have been done with the lawyers of the third accused as required by Section 162A3 of Plea Bargaining Act 2022, Act 1079. More importantly, the evidence of clandestine communication and meetings between Attorney General and Ted Accused, which we have shown you, dates back as far as 16th February 2022, 17th July 2022, when no settlement or plea bargaining proposals have even been made by Big C and Mr. Jaka. All these communications, telephone calls, WhatsApp chats, and all that, they all happened in 2022. And you are flaunting letters you claim were issued in 2023. That's the reason why you were calling. <laughs> so, it is neither here nor there. 
We have also played to you a recording of a phone call conversation held between the Attorney General and Mr. Jakwa as recently as 9th April 2024, a day Mr. Jakwa was scheduled to testify in court. It is evidently clear from the foregoing facts that the plea bargaining excuse being mounted by the Attorney General and his assigns are palpable lies calculated to divert attention from the critical issues at stake. The question every well-meaning Ghanaian should be asking is why the Attorney General will refuse a proposal to settle this case which will ensure the payment of 2 million euros to the state at a time our country is faced with economic bankruptcy. <laughs> there was no wrongdoing on the part of anybody. Then somebody says he's sensitive about his company's reputation and so on, so he's prepared to pay 2 million euros to Ghana. I say no. If I take it, a uh, uh, will not go to jail. So let that two million go waste, and I find way of contriving evidence to get a two-forcing nail. These are the statesmen we have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, considering the scandalous nature of this recording, and other forms of evidence we have shown you, we wish to make the following pressing demands as part of efforts to restore credibility to the Attorney General's office and Ghana's judicial system as a whole. One, the immediate and unconditional resignation of, or dismissal of Godfrey Dame for bringing the high office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice into disrepute and public opprobrium. Clearly, Mr. Dami is not fit to hold himself out as Attorney General and Minister of Justice. He is unfit to be the leader of the Ghana Bar. Two, the immediate prosecution of Godfrey Dami for multiple violations of the laws of Ghana. We wish to make it clear that should President Akufuado refuse or fail to prosecute him, a future NDC government will prosecute Godfrey Dabbe for this heinous crime of fabrication of evidence. Three, commencement of disciplinary proceedings by the General Legal Council against Godfrey Dabbe and his disbarment for conduct on becoming of a lawyer, and more importantly, the leader of the Ghana Bar. Four, a publicly televised parliamentary inquiry into this and other reports of judicial manipulations by Godfrey Dame with a view to censor Godfrey Dame to prevent the recurrence of such judicial manipulations. In conclusion, friends from the media, it is clear from the incontrovertible evidence we have adduced today that the government has no evidence of wrongdoing against the minority leader, but is only involved in fabrications to persecute him as retribution for his strong opposition to the economic mismanagement and general misrule of the Akufuado Baumia government. These damning revelations call into question the integrity of the case of the prosecution in the ongoing ambulance trial and the necessity for sale. Godfrey Dame has brought shame and disrepute to the Honorable Office of the Attorney General with his criminal, devious and vicious conduct. He is a danger to fairness and justice in our judicial system and represents the lowest point in the history of persons who have occupied the hallowed office of Attorney General and Minister Justice. While we have pointed out many times 
that Godfrey Dami epitomizes all that is inherently wrong, investing both the office of the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice in the same person, we believe that he has recklessly abused both offices and his continuous stay in office is no longer tenable. The primary responsibility of the Attorney General is to be the voice of rule of law, ensure the impartial enforcement of law, and advise the President and government to take actions that conform to law. More importantly, an Attorney General must be a shining example and a leading light for the bar, not a criminal-minded, crooked, devious and vicious person who is preoccupied with witch hunting and victimization as has become the cup of tea of honorable or dishonorable of Redam. You can make your choice. Mr. Dame has demonstrated time without number that he cannot prioritize the, in, the national interest over his party's parochial and self-serving interests. He must therefore resign or be sacked by the president without delay. Thank you. Thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you very much.